Hello, what's up, guys? And we're back for the Lost Caverns of Excellent car previous discussion. As of this uh, posting, I think uh, the full set is already out, but let me ju just uh, highlight some of the cards that I think uh, would still have potential in some of the formats. And what I've observed as we browse through already in the spoilers as they posted is that there are pretty much a lot more of uh, card components that can be very useful and new synergy interactions can be uh, formulated out of these uh, new cards but still we're just having to go with what we have previously as we go along and uh, this would be the part three of uh, if you check the previous two we still have some uh, various uh, random cards that was uh, discussed uh, i've skipped out the commander card previous as we'll have more of maybe a separate topic for those but uh, we'll just stick on from uh, a few uh, formats that we can discuss constructed basically like uh, standard pioneer modern etc so we're going to go first with our first card here is trumpeting carnosaur this is the showcase uh, full art version it is a rare and for six mana you get a seven six dinosaur with trample and within there's the battlefield you will discover five and that's also an option to pay three you can pay three to discard it to deal three damage to target teacher or planeswalker it's still a good way to curve maybe standard uh, version would have this one in a red green or even in a naya color dino deck because it's ability that can go on the top and also can get you a bonus uh, uh, board advantage with the discover five and it can also act early on as just a spot removal if needed i can deal three damage but the only uh, sad here is that it won't be able to deal three damage to the dome so at times there need you need to have the extra three damage to finish off your opponent then this card will not really provide this that one of the discard effect but still i think this would be a good card to include in particular for that uh, version and maybe even for some uh, mid-range or ramp decks that has several cards that can be good to discover from five mana and below and i would consider trampling carnosaur as an added uh, creature to get you board advantage and card advantage basically so overall i think this one is five over five next up is our mythic god from green this is already previewed in uh, in its showcase version and it can be flipped to this card, a land. My name is uh, Odger Kaslem, Deepest Growth. It's a 5 to 6 5 Trampler. When it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of the library. And then you pay put a creature card and or a land card from among them in the battlefield. So that's very, very card advantage in given that you have Trample. Basically, you need to deal off and kill this on the spot before it gets to your opponent's next combat step and it also works well if you have effects like uh, giving your creature haste and this one would basically comes to play attack for six and then put that a card and creature card and a land card from the top six cards of library so that is a very good way to get the benefit of it and if ever it gets to be revealed or not exiled it gets to die it will return as a temple of cultivation so this land would also get you a mana source and not only that you can pay three to transform it but you would need to only have 10 or more permanents and only sorcery so basically in most of uh, mid-range and uh, ramp decks they would uh, have to check uh, if they can achieve the 10 permanents but uh, given those scenarios you can still be able to garner that setup and if even that you get to they would answer other Kaslem, you could still be able to pay this one and achieve this uh, condition for it to be transformed back to its uh, creature form so this is basically a very good card five over five in our personal rating and next up we have Kodzil Malamet Exemplar this is a Celestia color green and white uh, three for three three it is a cut warrior legendary your opponents can cast spells during your turn this is sort of a uh, grand abolisher ish effect and whenever one or more creatures you control with power greater than its base power deals combat damage and you will draw a card so this trigger would only have you once because it would need only one or more creatures but it would uh, really fit well in the counters or 
putting counter circuiture as it would achieve its condition that its base power is uh, increased by these plus and plus and counters. So given that uh, there are already an existing uh, green white counters deck in standard, I think that was this would also fit as a sort of uh, curve for the three mana. And also prevent your opponents to do shenanigans as countering your spells since they would not be able to cast spells during your turn. So it's still a very good card advantage. It's only an uncommon, so its deck specific ability would still be able to get you a good benefit. And also this would also fit in maybe the hardened scales deck in modern. If there are instances that you would need to have this one. I can think uh, this would uh, get to fit at least uh, two copies in that uh, deck archetype. So overall rating for this one is, I think, is 4 out of 5. Next, we have the Sentinel of the Name City. This is the showcase, uh, not the showcase, but a borderless version. It's a 3 to cost 3 for Vigilance, a Marfo Aquarius Scout. When it enters the battlefield uh, or attacks, you create a map token. So in a way that you would need to have token to bargain, for example, in your previous uh, Wild Shadow Drain uh, setup, if you're aligned to that uh, kind of... Uh, deck uh, strategy sentinel of the name city would uh, be a good fit for that and with only three mana that's only one green any splashable setup like a uh, simic for instance or even black green would still have this one as a good way to add for those and if you remember there is a gulgari explore deck in back in the day of the first excellent standard i think uh, this version would still be possible now that we have explore again and we have several ways to create map tokens that can trigger the explore effect so sentinel of the city in standard would be a good way to fit for that kind of uh, deck strategy so overall rating this is for our over five on the setup Next, we have a uh, Zoyowa Labatang. This is an uncommon legendary creature that's a Goblin Warlock. And this one is the showcase uh, excellent uh, Aztec ish frame. So, it's a 2 2 cast for black and red, 2 2 at that touch. And the beginning of your end step, if we descend this turn, that means that uh, if a permanent card was put into your graveyard from anywhere, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. And uh, Zoyowa would deal 3 damage to each opponent who didn't. So in this setup, basically, your Rakdos Sacrifice deck would be the first uh, archetype in mind that can be very beneficial for this ability. It goes that it is also a 2-drop. It means that it is uh, it can be easily cast early on and have your uh, anvil uh, triggers done to satisfy its uh, descend uh, trigger in which you can have also at the end of your end step. Uh, triggering this descend uh, ability would have your opponent discard a card or sacrifice or face the consequence that if they do not, they will uh, get 3 damage life total. And uh, uh, basically, uh, maybe for the Pioneer version, this might uh, get another fix because of the Oven Cat combo that can also satisfy its uh, descend trigger that is uh, done during its end step. So overall, it's only, uh, again, a deck specific uh, uh, card setup but uh, its card value is pretty much very uh, advantageous if you add it in the deck so i think i'm rating this one as a uh, four out of five so next i think we're almost halfway for this uh, batch we have a uh, hot seals flanker this is a three to cast three one a cut wire flash then in there's the battlefield you choose one put it a counter on flanker for each creature that left the battlefield under your control this turn or you gain two life and scry two or exile target graveyard. So this is a good, again, a good utility creature. It goes to you to benefit uh, with that, that if ever you, your board gets wiped, you can have this one place the Cosmos Encounter for each of the creatures that died that turn under your control. And also, you can also get a set up uh, to deal with the uh, graveyard shenanigans by exiling target player's graveyard. And at any times, also, you can still get to gain two life while as having a 3 1 creature with flash in your battlefield. So that is a triple option for this card. I'm not uh, really sure if you're going to rate this one as 5 out of 5, but it's pretty much a good way to have as a sideboard in uh, any cases if. Uh, your deck, for example, has a way to can need to have a three mana in your curb. I think having one or two copies of this in the main deck would be a good uh, option for this card to have. And uh, 
pioneer wise i think this is also a good sideboard in most of the uh, white based decks that can also have you to option to excel the graveyard and at the same time gets you a threat that can also attack for any added uh, board presence and board damage so overall i would still have this one as a five over to five next up we have a publication foundry this artifact is a rare that is a one of white <coughs> the activation would also have you to pay one uh, tapping to add your one mana but uh, this would only be used to cast as an artifact spell or activate any of the artifact source so that means that with this uh, initial setup you would need to have a white based artifact deck for it to have this one as a good uh, component to for you to ramp also to your big spells for example and also to have those other option to pay three tap exile one or more artifacts to control or other artifacts to control total mana value x then then you can basically return target artifact card with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield so any graveyard based effect shenanigans can also be done with this one but i think uh, given the uh, setup of most uh, artifact decks in standard i'm not sure if uh, this would see play and maybe if we have for example a boros uh, red white uh, artifact uh, deck then maybe that would be a good way to unload only have this one as a ramp for that one in any dark situations you would need to to return a specific artifact from graveyard to the battlefield but this one would really cost you somewhat uh, a good equivalent because you need to sacrifice other artifacts you control that is equal to the total mana value or less to your target artifact so i'm not really sure for now if we can get to see this one as a archetype in the standard format and even that for the pioneer uh, scenario so i think this would go for now as three out of five so next up corpse of the lost we are now nine out of thirteen uh this is an enchantment that goes well to benefit their skeletons so it's not uh, it's quite unlikely that we have support for the skeleton tribal but it gets you to have the skeletons you control uh, having persona plus zero and have haste when it enters the battlefield it will also create a creature and a 2-2 black skeleton pirate creature token that becomes a 3-2 with haste and the end step if you descend this turn you may pay one life and then return corpse of the lost to its owner's hand so in that uh, certain situation uh, in case that you are having also sacrifice effects or discarding hand a uh, card from your hand to have the descent uh, uh, condition satisfied then course of the loss might be your uh, best card to include here or uh, there are instances that we're in would need to uh, sacrifice uh, certain creatures or recurring creatures for example uh, example is the Mosswood Dead Knight, then uh, Curse of the Lost might be your option here to add, as it would also gain, get you to benefit uh, a card advantage by creating this 2-2 uh, Black Skeleton Pirate to Creature Token. Now for, I think for the Pioneer, if there are times that uh, Cut Oven might be an option here for you to have your Descent set up, uh, I think uh having this one for three mana might be very slow for that uh, uh, kind of a deck because you will need also a three drop for instance the mayhem devil for you to have your engine going on and to maximize or optimize your mana and having three mana for just uh creating a two two block skeleton by token that can be returned at end of your turn would not really suffice to that kind of uh, deck strategy so I think for now this would mean that uh, pioneer setup it will not really have to be that impactful in that kind of deck archetype as compared to standard wherein you can still have enough mana to go to your curve and have this one as your main benefit for the, uh, that uh, deck setup so overall i think this would rate this one for now as three out of five and we have our next a rare legendary artifact thousand moons smithy this is a four mana for one two white white in two any color enters the battlefield create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with the creature's power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and creatures you control and when your your pre-combat main phase you may tap five and tap artifacts and the creatures you control and then have the one transform into a barracks of the thousand so again in the setup 
if it would go with the creature tokens for example you will, in, you will get the benefit of having the more artifacts in creatures you control the more the gnome soldier artifact creature token gets bigger and also the more chances that you can tap those uh, artifacts and creatures to transform this into the barracks of the thousand so let's check the ability of this land it is a legendary artifact land that can be tapped for one white mana and whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using the mana produced by the barracks of the thousand you will also create a gnome soldier artifact creature token so that's also benefit you get a bonus for this one you get to flip this one and whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell you get a free bonus uh, gnome token so i think this would fit in a tokens deck uh, maybe not only for mono white and even for the green white based token setup wherein you can create more of these artifacts and a benefit also to creating a gnome soldier artifact creature token and uh, flipping this one to box of the thousand will also have you an additional uh, bonus whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using the mana produced by this legendary artifact land so overall if uh, just a built around kind of uh, setup but i think this would be a very relevant card and maybe in that kind of uh, token deck for standard and pioneer wise i think this would also have a, a role in that kind of deck and this would uh, rate this one as uh, five out of five and next up is uh, the world of forgotten i think we have one more to go before we wrap thing we wrap up this uh, batch of video the world of forgotten is a sorcery with one blue and black it has the option to descend eight and if you have descended eight you can choose one of, of more effects of this card so the only default options is that is that you can only get to choose one but these three options are very much relevant in a demir or in a blue black kind of deck setup this one first is you can return target talent permanent to its owner's hand target the opponent discards a card or look at the top three cards library and then put one of them in your hand and the rest to your graveyard so this would uh, have you to go with a very uh, controlling effect because you can also have them uh, discard a card a uh, necessary card for instance you can also bounce a needed uh, target for example a blocker against your creatures and you can also dig out for answers by looking at the top three cards and getting you also the option to put the rest to your graveyard giving you more uh, options in case that you're going with a graveyard shenanigans i think in standard wise uh, maybe for a near mid-range deck this would be uh, a good uh, one or two copies uh, not really a superstar but given that uh, the descent eight uh, if you are having uh, uh, built on a permanent type of uh, mid-range deck then this this are i mean this is the higher chance that you can satisfy this uh, kind of setup but overall if you are just going with the typical build uh, they're having chances of eight would not be really your main goal here but still you can have these multiple card options in this uh, two mana sorcery and uh, for the setup also for the, the rogues deck in uh, pioneer that uh, this would not uh, be also a good option for you because you would need to have to open mana as early or during your opponent's turn for them to not op basically overreact on this uh, card so we need to open counter mana or spot removals instead at instant, at instant speed instead of having to just pay two to have this effect on sorcery speed against your opponent so overall i think, think this card would be really a good one because of its uh, setup by but i think uh, having uh, one or two copies in the deck would not really hurt in this kind of setup so that is uh, rated i think as three out of five and i think this is the last card for this batch we have a Defatum echo this is a merfolk spirit a uh, four four that i can think would be the merfolk explore deck is pretty much possible in the uh, standard uh, archetype as uh, the new cards from uh, lost covers of Ixalan. this ability that uh, during combat it will explore and then you can have it as a copy of another creature you control at the end of the turn so at any instance that you will have creatures that could uh, benefit in multiples for instance the lord kind of effect then deep fathom echo would be really your best option here to have and also it goes with a good uh body the 4-4 four, 4-4 four, 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 that can also have uh i mean a good 
way to attack uh, out and also having to explore which means that any chances that can also become a 5 5 for 4 mana and uh, again the build around deck for this one would be the blue green or even the sultai kind of uh, mid-range uh, merfolk with explorer creatures and uh, i think this uh, current build would still be possible and we will have to look out for that uh, full deck list or full beta deck list that we can have for the upcoming video and i think that's pretty much it this is the last card that we can offer for this batch of uh, lord's covers of pixel land card previews let me know in the comments below what you may think is uh, we can still have a good discussion of what would be these cards would have more effect in most of the uh, popular uh, constructed formats such as that of standard pioneer modern and the like so i guess that's pretty much it for this video thank you for checking this one don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys for more of these lci topics and uh, further deck text as we go to explore this set thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one